Hey guys, Bill Manning with Studio C41. Cinecell Film sent me another kit to test out and it is their new CS2 ECN2 simplified kit for motion picture film. I'm really excited to test this out. We actually did a music video with Sam Birchfield. He is a friend uh, of Woodlot Media, myself. And when Cinestill Film came to me and said that they would like for me to do a review on this, I really wanted to like create a story out of this. And so I reached out to Sam and Sam was really excited because he actually had just finished working on a single. So we created this studio in here into a set where we actually created uh, a full on uh, music video and I'm really excited to go uh, uh, check that out. So please uh, head over to Sam Birchfield's YouTube page, put the links down below in the description and please go check it out. Uh, Woodlot Media did a fantastic job and it's a absolutely beautiful song. <laughs> Of growing old, raising a child, building a home. We would go fishing along the coast. But I got no time, and I got no boat. So maybe I'll die as a pauper. No possessions, no silver or copper. Just you and me, in the dust of apocalypse. Together we lay in the sands of old cities. All right, guys, so this ECN2 kit is a little bit different than the, the traditional C41 kit. I actually did a review for another company uh, where we did an actual full on. Uh, uh, ECN2 breakdown. So a lot of the things that I covered as far as the difference between C41 and ECN2 really are covered in that. But what I would like to say is that this ECN2 kit has been designed for motion picture film. Now there's been a, a little bit of confusion uh, for those that are in the, in the know with this is um, can it process uh, Vision 3? And yes, it can process Vision 3. Uh, we actually have part of the test that we're going to do is that we, I have some 250D that was cut down from 65 millimeter uh, down into uh, 61 and a half so that it can fit 120. So uh, we're definitely gonna do that. We're gonna do some 800T. Unfortunately, I couldn't get around to doing some 50D. The lighting conditions were just not right for 50D, but I definitely will uh, post some pictures when the weather is right for that. So what is the big difference between this kit and say a C41 kit? So this kit is designed for motion picture film to have a very flat image profile. Uh, if you were to look at like something like in this video right here, um, there is a lot of flexibility to edit uh, and color grade your, uh, your film without having to degrade the quality of it. So we'll dive into some examples and some before and afters and my take at least in grading. Not the best color grader, but we'll definitely uh, see some really awesome improvements out of it. So uh, this kit, uh, also addresses a very common thing in motion picture film, and that is called the Remjet layer. The Remjet layer is a carbon back that is placed on the back of the film, and it is uh, kind of glued on, and uh, it traps light from traveling through the film and then bouncing back in. So if you've ever overexposed Cinestill film and you get that red glow, which is called halation, uh, uh, that actually stops that. But Cinestill film removes that so that it actually makes it a little bit easier to take it to a lab and process it. Um, but you do have that, you know, kind of like that artistic flair and that look with that red halation. And, um, and some people like that. Um, it's a very popular film. So, um, so let's dive into opening this up and seeing what we got in here. All right, so in this packaging, we have uh, two different powders, right? So we have our set of instructions in here on how to mix this and process it. But we do have really just two steps here. We have a color negative, which is going to be your developer here. So this is step one. 
And then we have our step two, which is going to be our bleach and our fix, which are done all in one step. So um, this is something, you know, as far as mixing this is going to be very simple. Before we get started here, what we are going to need are a few things. We are going to need our developer here. Uh, we have to have our heated water um, and we need to have a pitcher. Um, so the instructions here, and I highly, 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 highly recommend that you read into this because it tells you on how to mix all of this. But for, for simplicity's sake, you know, I'm gonna tell you guys right now, it does require 600 milliliters of water. Um, and then you start stirring it um, and it has to be at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, as you're stirring the water in, you're going to pour this powder into it. And then um, you're gonna keep stirring and then uh, you're gonna actually pour in the last bit of the water to get it to uh, one liter of working chemistry. All right, so let's go ahead and get that going. So I'm gonna go ahead, take my water here that's been heating up and I am going to go ahead and pour in 600 milliliters of water. All right, so uh, next step is the bleach fix step. All right, so in the instructions here, uh, we want to go ahead and uh, place 600 to 700 milliliters of water. So just like the first step here. And then um, we are going to circulate the contents in there. So very similar to the developer here, uh, we are going to put our water in, we're gonna start mixing, stirring the water up, and then we are going to pour part A into the water. So make sure part A is first, all right? Do not put part B in first, all right? So um, uh, once you do, um, then you want to go ahead and then combine part B and then uh, just be careful, uh, it does create what, uh, an endothermic reaction, so it is gonna start fizzing up on you guys as well. All right, so let's go ahead and knock that out. So our water here, this is distilled, just regular distilled water. I like to make sure that um, the chemistry uh, is distilled water, uh, so that way it removes any particular issue There we go. We got 600 milliliters in there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start stirring this up. Let's get that stirring. You can see it's already fizzing up, right? So we got that endothermic reaction that's going on right now. All right, and now let's go ahead and top this bad boy off. All right, we got extra in here. We'll just go ahead and pour that out into here. All right. All right, and the instruction says to pour back and forth between the bottle and the um, and the pitcher. So I have a filter here, so I'll just go ahead.
All right, guys, we got our film loaded inside this uh, Patterson tank. I got the chemistry almost at temperature right now, and I want to go over some of the instructions before we get started. All right, so on this page right here in the instructions that Cinestill Film gives you, there are three windows here. If you're processing the uh, Cinestill Film uh, uh, film, the 800T and the 50D, then you want to go off of this bottom window right here, right? So we want to make sure that we are using the correct steps because the top one right here is the actual full ECN2 process for us, uh, for Eastman uh, film. So, uh, in all honesty, I'm not entirely sure why they even put this whole section in there. I honestly think it's just confusing and it actually just needs to be fully removed from it because I don't think it's absolutely necessary. All right, the, the middle one here, this is if, if you want to do your bleach and your fix in different steps, all right? So that is something that you want to make sure. Now, the last step, if you're using Vision 3, you can use this bottom window, but the only caveat out of this is that you have to uh, remove the Remjet layer uh, either after where you're kind of cleaning it off, or if you want your chemistry to last a little bit longer, then you can actually buy or make your own pre-bath and remove the Remjet layer before you even start this step. Uh, that will prolong the chemistry um, and uh, I highly recommend if you guys know how to do it, it's very simple. You can even make your own pre-bath. All right, guys, so we are now at temperature here, so let's get started. All right, so in the instructions here, there is no uh, soaking, there's no getting it up to temperature or anything along those lines, right? So essentially, the second that we put this in, the clock starts. So I have two rolls of uh, Cinestill Film 800T loaded in here. We're going to process it for three minutes and 30 seconds. All right, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and pour this in. And a very important thing when you are processing this, always measure the temperature inside the bottle. This ECN2 developer step is quite simple. If you're familiar with processing C41 at home, then these steps are quite similar. Additionally, the CS2 Cine Simplified Kit can be used for any color negative film once traditionally used for C41 processing. The Blick Step removes the silver from this film, leaving only the color dyes and hardening the emulsion all in a single step. Interestingly, this Blix is the same as their CS41 kit. If you wish to get creative, you can certainly do a bleach bypass by foregoing the Blix and using the F96 fixer. Go get this underwater. All right, guys, so I am now wrapped up with developing the 250D. I gave it an additional one stop push. So I already did my rinse and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and pour it out and I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to show you guys how I removed the Remjet. So uh, I am using the bath here that uh, was, it's still pretty warm from when I was developing earlier, but I'm going to use this to remove the Remjet layer and then 
I got a bucket full of distilled water here that I'm going to do one final clean and then I'm going to hang it back up over here. So let's go ahead and get started. Get this out of the way. Right, so I'll just open that up. Bring this over. Now for this, I choose to use, uh, these are just nitro gloves. Um, they're just super, super soft and really gentle on the emulsion uh, when it comes to uh, removing the rimjet layer off. Remember the rimjet layer is on the backing of the emulsion, but you're still gonna have to kind of rub uh, the film and you kind of have to be really careful when you're doing that. So using these gloves, it's just gonna make it a little bit easier for me. And I'm just, I guess maybe just, I just don't wanna get my grubby fingerprints all over it. So, go ahead and drop it in here. So we got that. You can already see the rimjet layer is starting to come off. just going to gently just use my fingers to just clean it off so you can see here the remjet removal process can be done in two different ways the first is a homemade or purchased pre-bath using a washing soda baking soda and water solution before the developer will help remove the adhesive found on the back of the film and strip most of the remjet off. This will prolong the chemistry for additional rolls of film with remjet. Alternatively, you can use the developer as a one-shot and gently remove the remjet from the film's back after the blitz and washing steps. All right guys, so we are pretty much done with developing the film here. So the next step is we're going to scan it in. So I have my negative supply copy stand uh, with my Sony a7 III and a 90 millimeter f2.8 macro lens. I'm gonna have it tethered into my uh, MacBook and then we're just gonna kind of uh, fly through it. Cinestill Film's new CS2 Cine Simplified delivers the same contrast profiles found in Eastman Kodak's motion picture processing standards. This kit provides the flexibility to edit the image for high contrast scenes and offer the same low contrast look often found in motion picture films. Now that the ECN2 process is available for the consumer market, Processing films once dedicated to the C41 process can now allow a photographer to enjoy the benefits of digitally fine-tuning the look of their image without degrading the quality. It was fascinating to see how I can easily edit this set of images for the music video. The set was daylight lit, but I was using a tungsten balanced film. Today, in the motion picture industry, DPs often forgo using the daylight filter and have the image shifted from tungsten to daylight at the scan. Matching 800T to 250D was a simple process. In the dust of apocalypse, together we lay 
the sands of old city When I run, I'm like a ghost Empty as a breeze, quicker than most I run through the forest, underneath the pines on fire That's an old swing set and a broken rope tire Well, I don't know what times... Alright guys, well that was just a few examples of what this ECN2 kit can do with motion picture film. Something that we didn't do in this particular video is that you can use Portra 400 and Ektar 100 and get the same low contrast results. So I highly encourage if you are looking into this and you want to have more control over your images, certainly go with something like an ECN2 kit that gives you that flat profile in order to make the custom edits that I was able to in here. I was never a color grader. I, I would say that anybody that is proficient in color grading is probably sitting here face palming at the work that I've done, but I would have to say that I'm really happy in seeing that it has really changed my mind as far as what I can do with film as previously, and I'm really happy with the results. So uh, I'm really happy with what Cinestill Film did. Uh, we have a very complicated process that was very difficult for anybody to get processing done. It had to be done on a linear machine where you have 100 feet, 400 feet, even longer in some cases. And that was something that was never really available to the market. We even have other kits that are available out there that are done in several steps. And it can be very overwhelming for somebody that is new to the process. So for Cinestill Film to turn seven steps into really just a developer and a Blix step is quite impressive. With all the pros, I do think that there are some areas that could certainly be improved on. Uh, for example, with the Remjet layer, the adhesive that's in it does have to go somewhere in the pre-bath. And unfortunately, if you are working with Remjet, you will have to worry about color shifts. And that is why Cinestill Film recommends using this as a one shot if you're using film with the Remjet layer. Now, if you shoot primarily on motion picture film that does have a Remjet layer, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't use this kit. You can certainly come up with your own at home process, which is a very simple process of creating a pre bath in which you can remove the adhesive prior to the actual development step. So you can certainly use this several times over without having to worry about your film running into color shifts after that first batch. The only area I also think that Cinestill Film could certainly improve on is their instructions. I felt a little bit overwhelmed with the instructions. There was a lot of information that I felt like that was not necessary in this kit. So those are my thoughts as far as the pros and cons, and I think I am very happy with the results. It has certainly got me thinking differently about how I should process my film, and I am very happy with the end result. All right, well, I want to take a moment and say a very special thank you to Cinestill Film for sending us some film and this ECN2 kit to try out. If it wasn't for them reaching out in order to do this, we would have never created A, this video, and the music video that Sam now has. It is a collaborative piece that I think was absolutely a great symbol of how we can take different areas of art and bring them together and create something awesome. Until the next film review, shoot some film. Dang it. No possessions, no silver or copper, just you and me. And the dust of apocalypse, together we lay in the sands of old city. I hope we have Christmas and a couple more dolls, a big piano and a green, green lawn. I hope we have Georgia Lynn and Mickey Wren and a 
couple good neighborhood friends But maybe we'll die as paupers No possessions, no sons or daughters